Hello and welcome to another edition of Final Cut Pro Help Live. I'm super excited for today's show. We do have, I'm just going to preface this at the beginning here, YouTube, it looks like, is beta testing their new live platform. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Any feedback you have, any issues, uh, don't hesitate. Put them in the comments on this chat. I want to know about if we need to fix it or if I need to give them feedback. I want to collect it from you. So thank you again so much for tuning in and joining. If you're watching this live, awesome. Again, use that chat to communicate any questions you have to me. You can always email them. Use at Final Cut Pro Help on all the social networks to get in touch with me as well, especially if you're watching this on a replay. That's a way to, to reach out to me. So uh, let's get into it. What is this episode going to be all about? Well, it is episode 13, and if you've been following along, it's April 1st. If you've been following along through this past month of March, we've been collecting a ton of votes, especially on Instagram, for the shortcuts that you use the most inside of Funnel Cut Pro. Now, we took that information and made a bracket, and it was 64 shortcuts, and we've pinned them up against each other, voting in various ways, mostly on Instagram stories, which if you're not following, at Final Cut Pro Help, go follow on Instagram. You can vote for the top shortcuts. We're into the final round, and in today's episode, we are going to be re revealing which eight shortcuts make it in to the next round. But I want to do demo all top 16 shortcuts that showed up on this list, because you have voted for these shortcuts, so there's a reason that you're using them. And if you're not using one of these, I wanted to give these demos so that you can see maybe some ways to include these in your workflow, help you become a better editor, more efficient editor. Keyboard shortcuts are a huge way to uh, save time, and you should be using them. So uh, this is what is going to happen in this episode. I'm going to present a shortcut or sometimes a pair of shortcuts, and then I'm going to demo those, and I'm kind of going to go back and forth between this keynote presentation and demos. Normally, I do a whole presentation on something, I demo a feature, and then we have a Q&A at the end. Well, in this case, it's going to kind of all be mixed together. So we're going to do the demos and then kind of bounce back and forth. But again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. That'll definitely help out and allow us to... Uh, see some cool things. Hopefully get some answers for you. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So let's take a look at it and see which shortcuts have made it into the, kind of the final round here. And we'll take a look at it. Um, the first shortcut, not really a shortcut, just a keyboard key, but it is the space bar. Uh, this is a huge one. If you are new to playing back video on a computer, not even talking about Final Cut Pro, just playing back video. If you're not using the spacebar to play that video and pause it, maybe you're just clicking a key on the uh, screen there, the click and the play button, and then you're clicking the pause button going back and forth. If that's what you're doing, I strongly recommend you check out and start using the spacebar because it is so helpful. It's a way for you to save a lot of time just press that space bar and you're good to go. Now, that key went up against option space bar in the bracket. Just the way the voting went, that's kind of how it turned out. Now, I did not see any issue with these two keys going up against each other, and I'm not surprised at all that the space bar beat out voting-wise option space bar. Um, so let me show you these two. We're going we're gonna to do a little demo of these keys because you might be wondering why would you ever use option space bar instead of just the space bar. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to switch out of the uh, presentation, presentation there, and I'm going to switch over to Final Cut here, and we'll take a look at things. Um, looks like I'm looking at the stream information. Again, this is a new YouTube live browser, just making sure everything looks good. Looks like everyone's connected. If you are watching this, if you can put in the chat that everything looks good, sounds good, uh, that would be awesome. I just want to make sure it is all cor connecting correctly. Uh, but it looks like it is, so we're going to continue on here. In the, uh, in our, our uh, what is this, the browser here, I'm going to go up to our projects and, and take a look at this. So I'm just going to open up this project that is called uh, Three Split Edits. So it's just a couple clips on the timeline. No big deal, nothing too exciting. Uh, I am going to go in and lower the volume on some of these clips just so you don't have to hear that coming through. 
And let's take a look at this. So let's also hide the captions. We're just going to get rid of as much stuff on the uh, on the timeline here just so you don't see any of this uh, data and that information out there because it's great, but for now we're not doing anything with captions. So let's look at the space bar first because that was the shortcut that beat out uh, option spacebar and if we scrub through I have skimming turned on which is over here We'll talk about that a little bit later, but I have skimming turned on so if I just drag across the timeline It skims through it pretty straightforward and at any point if I hit the spacebar It's gonna play from the skimmer location, which is right here in that project notes notice it starts playing those uh, fireworks there pretty straightforward and because I have skimming turned on uh, if you're skimming across the timeline Final Cut assumes you want to play from that skimmer location because that's going to be where your mouse cursor is. So you just hit the space bar, it plays from there. Pretty straightforward. If I move the cursor off of the timeline and I go up into the viewer or the browser, maybe I'm somewhere else. Now if I hit the space bar, it does play from the playhead location because Final Cut's smart enough to know, okay, you're not on the timeline, so I'll just play from the playhead location. So that is using the space bar. Again, you can use this anywhere you play media. I'm sure you're pretty used to it as a Final Cut person. But now, if I'm on the timeline and I do Option Spacebar, notice it plays from the playhead location. So even though I have a skimmer over here on the beach, right, even though I'm going to do that, if I hit Option Spacebar, it's going to play from the fireworks because that's the clip the playhead is on. So that's those shortcuts. Pretty straightforward, right? Option Spacebar to play always from the playhead location or if you're skimming across, you can just hit the space bar to play from that location. So that is the first two shortcuts. And again, space bar, <laughs> beat out option space bar. It's a more popular one that makes sense. So on the next set of shortcuts, we had right arrow going up against S for enabling and disabling skimming, which we just talked about. So let's take a look at this because the right arrow is a great keyboard key that I use all the time. And it did beat out uh, it did be out our skimming, enabling, disabling. So if I hit the right arrow, it just goes to the next frame, next frame, next frame, next frame, right? I'm not going to talk about it anymore, but for the right arrow, because that's pretty much what it does. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Now S, if you look over here on the right side of the, the toolbar going across the middle here, if I hit the S key, what you'll notice is skimming, which is this key that's all the way on the left, skimming is either enabled, which it is now, or it's disabled. And it's also lighting up and lighting uh, the second one here, which I'll talk about in a second. So with skimming enabled, if I just skim or slide the arrow across the timeline, you can see in the viewer we're getting a nice preview of the content there, and it's skimming great. This is a huge benefit for editors. I find this speeds up everything, so I usually keep this enabled almost all the time. Now, there are, are situations and, and scenarios where you might have a ton of layers, video effects, transitions, and it's taking a lot of processor power from your computer, or maybe you're on a portable computer that just doesn't have a lot of power. You can disable skimming, and that can help the performance of Final Cut. So that's another reason you may enable or disable skimming is to help the performance of your machine there. So that's the S keyboard shortcut. While we're here, I just want to talk about this one on the, the to the right of video skimming, which is audio skimming. You can enable or disable of the audio skimming if you want to hear your audio as you're scrubbing across it. I find that can be more annoying the majority of the time than actually helpful. So shift S might be another shortcut you want to keep in mind and maybe you just want to disable audio skimming so you can have your video skimming cool so that is those two shortcuts let's clip back over here now again on those two right arrow beat out the s shortcut which i wasn't too surprised that kind of makes sense uh, skimming is a great thing to have but it's not it's not necessarily uh, the end of the world if you didn't have that you could just keep, click on the than the toolbar there. Now, the next one, Command Z, is moving on to the next round. And it went up against Shift Z for zoom to fit. Both very useful shortcuts. I use Shift Z all the time. I use Command Z all the time. They're just very helpful shortcuts. So let's take a look at them. Uh, you probably have used Command Z. It's not a Final Cut shortcut, it is a Mac OS shortcut. So you can use this almost in any app. If you go up to the edit menu and undo something, 
that's the same thing as using Command Z. So uh, here's an example. I'm going to click on this fireworks clip. I'm going to hit delete to delete it. Let's delete a couple of the other clips. I'm just making changes, right? A whole bunch of changes. If I didn't want to do those changes, I could just go and do Command Z to undo that step. Command Z, do Command Z again, again, and it keeps undoing each of those steps. You can even just hold the command key down and just press Z a bunch of times and it'll undo each of those steps. Notice it's going all the way back to my audio changes that I made. If I keep going back, it shows some of the work I was doing over. Uh, now I can do Shift Command Z to redo those changes because I do want the audio still muted on those clips. But that's Command Z to undo something, which as editors, we like to try things, right? So it's very common it's very common practice for editors to make a bunch of changes go try some things uh, and i wouldn't get too deep into it but maybe you make uh, a bunch of modifications to a clip or to an edit point you, you play it you decide you don't like it no big deal just use command z a couple times you can then go back and you'll be good to go now with that being said if you're going to make a ton of changes a, a pretty major change instead of relying on command z because Things can happen if Final Cut quits unexpectedly or something else happens. You won't have those Command Z options. You won't be able to undo. So if you're going to make a whole bunch of changes and you're trying something, what I recommend in that case is select the project, go up to the Edit menu, and there's an option to duplicate that project as a snapshot. When you duplicate it as a snapshot, let me actually do that here, and Shift Command D, you might have saw there, is the shortcut. But when you duplicate a project as a snapshot, which my original project here was three split edits, Notice I now have a second project called Three Split Edits Snapshot. You can't see the whole title right now, but it's the date and time of when that snapshot was created. So that's a really nice, easy way for you to just freeze that project in time, duplicate it as a snapshot. It's then in that time, it's already time stamped for you. We're still in the primary project. It hasn't gone and opened it up or anything. It's just back there as a snapshot. So if you need to recover something, you can go back to it. So I mentioned that because Command Z is great for in the moment and maybe just a like a oops, you want to go back, use Command Z. But if you're making a whole bunch of changes and experimenting, use that duplicate as snapshot feature, and that'll help out a lot. Now, the other keyboard shortcut I went up against was Shift Z. So if you don't know, on your timeline, you can be scrubbing around here. You can use the Command Plus key to zoom in. You can use Command Minus to zoom out. You have some options there, right? You can go up to the view menu here, and you can also do zoom in and zoom out if you want to. But here's why Shift Z is really cool. If I do Shift Z right now, it just zooms the timeline to fit in the available space. If I go over here and hide the effects browser and I do Shift Z again, notice it expands out to fit in that area. I could also do that up here in the viewer. If I go onto my view, maybe I zoom uh, way out to 25% because I'm messing with a title or I'm using the transform tool here to, to move something around. I can then do shift Z to zoom and fit the viewer in the available space. Notice it went to 86%. 86% is not an option here. So that's where zoom to fit uh, shift Z is really helpful. I'm going to use command Z to undo my move there with the transform tool. Uh, but yeah, then I have Shift Z to, to fit that content. So uh, again, I use Command Plus all the time to zoom in. That was on the bracket, but got beat out. But then I use Shift Z. I don't use Command Minus as much. I just use Shift Z to zoom and fit all of that project into uh, the viewer there. So hopefully those two shortcuts will help you out in your editing. Get a lot of these shortcuts like Command Z, uh, like the space bar, the right arrow. There are things that are universal across applications. So if you, even if you're editing with another app, you might find you are able to do these things. So the next two shortcuts we have, Shift Command V, which full disclosure, I have on my bracket going all the way. I think this is, for this year at least, the most useful shortcut. And I have Shift Command V going up against Control R to render a selection. And Luckily for me, <laughs> based attributes did get more votes uh, by a lot. It actually uh, was, was out pretty good, I believe, and beat out uh, Control-R for rendering a selection. I did not expect Control-R to get this high on the list. So why would you use these short two shortcuts in your workflow? Well, the first one, I'm going to do Shift-Command-V because that uh, that's my favorite out of anything. But if you go in and select a clip, Say like this uh, beach clip here. If you're working on this clip, you might be going up and color correcting it. And I'm going to make some just pretty drastic changes here to the color. I'm going to dip down the exposure. 
Uh, let's bring the mids up, just make it a goofy green. Then I'm gonna go over to my video effects browser. Let's put the comic basic look on it. Uh, yeah, we get this goofy green and black look. Uh, if you've made all these changes, we can even go in here and we'll scale up. Let me move down a little bit. Yeah, okay, cool. So I made a whole bunch of changes, right? If you make a bunch of changes like this to a clip, don't waste your time by applying all those same effects again and again and again to a bunch of other clips. What you can do is just select the clip, use Command C to copy the clip, and then you can go onto your other clips. I'm just going to select one here, but you could select well, you, yeah, just all of them. We'll use Command Z to undo it, right? So but just select all of these, and then you can use the shortcut to go in and paste those attributes. So I'm doing Shift Command V, which is that shortcut. And what Paste Attributes does is it brings up a window that shows us exactly what's going to happen. It's saying, hey, you copied this beach clip, it shows us a little thumbnail of the original clip, and you're about to paste it to eight different clips. You might see in the back here, I have some gap clips, so that's how it got to eight. And it shows me a list of all of the attributes that I'm copying and pasting between those clips. And in this case, I really like the visual effect that I created with the color board, the comic basic, I even zoomed in on this clip, which, which looks nice, right? So it gives me a list of all of those, and as you add more and more effects, you'll see this list gets larger. However, the zooming in, let me move this over so you can see, the zoom in that I did on this clip with the, the woman on the beach there is not going to apply to any of these other clips. So with paste attributes, I'm actually able to uncheck some of these attributes that I don't want to be copied on the others. I don't want to affect the audio, I can uncheck that. I could even say I just want the comic look and not the color board. However, in this case, let's just do both so you can see it. And if I scroll through, I can see a summary of everything. Looks good. If you do have keyframes, you can also copy and paste those between the clips, and it'll either maintain the timing or it'll stretch them to fit relative to the timing of the clips. Uh, that gets way de into details and examples. So if you have questions about that, you can email me, but I'm not going to demo it right here. So then I'm going to hit paste, and you'll notice on my timeline here, if I scrub across, notice in the viewer, we have all of those effects, that same green look, the comic uh, basic look, all of that is mixed together on all these clips. So in basically a split second, I applied all those filters to all of the clips instead of manually going in one by one by one. So that's why I think paste uh, attributes here is an extremely helpful shortcut because it allows you to just save so much time. You don't have to go and do all that stuff on everything. Now I'm going to do Command Z to undo that because I don't want that effect on all of these. Uh, we'll actually remove it from this one as well. Let's go back to before I did the color board. Notice I'm just doing Command Z, Z, Z as far back as the snapshot. Okay, cool. Now, one thing I do want to point out there, because you may be asking, okay, you can see there's paste attributes, but there's also paste effects, which is Option Command V. So what's the difference? Well, paste attributes brings up that window, gives you those checkboxes, and allows you to enable or disable what you're pasting instead of just pasting everything, which is what paste effects does. So that's the difference between those two. Okay, now the other shortcut was Control R. So for this, I'm gonna go into the preferences for a second. I'm gonna show you something here. We, in preferences, as you're going through these, you can make different changes for things. But in the playback section, you have rendering and you have background rendering, which if you've been having issues with Final Cut closing or, or just having weird issues, I believe it's because this background rendering default time somehow in an update got changed to 0.3 seconds, which is almost instantly starting background rendering. I believe that's been causing a lot of issues. I've had confirmation from people that changing this has fixed issues they've been having. So if that's the case, I do recommend changing this to uh, something like four seconds, three seconds. Uh, I personally usually put it to 20 seconds. I like it to be when I walk away from the machine or I switch over to another app, if I forget to start rendering, it'll go and do it out automatically for you. So if you have this background rendering feature, why would you want a shortcut to start rendering, right? Well, there are many people that disable the background rendering and they just like to manually render things. But in other cases, you may be working on a really complex project that is an hour, two hours long, maybe it's a documentary, and you're working on a specific clip or even a transition here, and you just want to render that to see how it's going to look. 
because if I play it back here, you'll notice this little dotted line at the top of the timeline. Maybe a little hard to see on the uh, live stream here, but if you are working inside of Final Cut, you'll see this dotted line as you make changes. That's letting us know what's not rendered. And that just means that if we play this back, it may be lower quality than what's actually going to show up when you export this and share this out. So if I just added this transition or maybe an effect in the middle of this clip, I could just say I want to render just that little section and not my entire project. Because background rendering, it's going to start at the beginning of the project and go through. So if there's a section you want to render, you can use, you can hit R to enable the range selection tool. You can make a little selection, and then you can use that shortcut, Control R, and it'll go through and render just that selection. So instead of having to go through and render the entire thing, you can say, okay, I just want to render that one spot and not everything on there. So that is the rendering, background rendering options there for that one and that shortcut. So I did not think that that was going to make it onto the bracket here. Uh, and even making it into this round, that was surprising to me. Uh, it does stop here. It is not making it in to the efficient eight. It is ending its, <laughs> its run of terror up to this point. So those are eight of our shortcuts. This was one side of the bracket. If you do have your own and, and you're following along, I'll show it in the, a little bit later. But those are eight of them. And now we're going to go on to the next eight, which um, actually, let me show you one thing back here. So these shortcuts, if you were looking at the bracket, were all organized a certain way. So as an example, the space bar and uh, the S key, for example, that are making it on, uh, all four of these shortcuts actually are part of the playback and navigation category of shortcuts. So what we're seeing here is the top playback and navigation shortcuts, which are spacebar and the letter S. It's actually just two keys. They're not even multi-key shortcuts. Uh, we then had Command Z and Shift Z. Command Z is an application-based shortcut. And then we have Shift Command Z that went on, and that's an effects-based shortcut. So we're now seeing the top shortcuts in each of the categories of shortcuts. So um, kind of cool. I mean, these are... Uh, kind of the, the biggest things inside of each category. So if you're big on effects, Shift Command V should be one that you know. If you are playing back your content just by clicking the mouse on the play button or doing other things with navigation, this is why you'd want to see those top shortcuts in those categories. Okay, um, the next category is editing and organizing. So the top shortcuts here, we had Command C went up against V for enabling and disabling a clip. Both very useful. Command C is just a very generic shortcut that we all use, and that one got more votes than V, but let me show you each of them. Um, command C, I'm not even going to show. You know it. If you select something, you do Command C, it's the same thing as going up to edit and copying that clip. Um, command C really doesn't do anything on its own, right? You need to do paste attributes or paste or another type of a command to really make command C worthwhile, which is why I think that the uh, the paste attributes shortcut should be one of the top shortcuts. I just, it, for me, that makes sense. Um, so my opinion, you can vote however you want to vote, but that's just my opinion because command C, if we did it, you're not going to see anything happen, right? It's just copying it. So uh, that's that one. However, V is is kind of a cool uh, cool shortcut. So let me bring some of these clips over. I'm just going to bring, yeah, just the one over. You'll get the, the idea here. So if you have a clip selected, in this case, the uh, this little uh, video of this fountain right here, if I hit the V key, it disables that clip. You notice it kind of darkens it out. Let me undo it. So I'm hitting V again to enable the clip and then V to disable it. So enabled, it's covering up the fireworks. If I disable it, I'm able to see what's below it, and we're essentially just seeing the firework clip there. So it's useful for video, right? You can, you can hide video doing it that way, but you can also use V to disable audio clips as well. So if you are editing and you've been using music or uh, any kind of audio, you have an interview and multi-track audio, you can use V to disable specific spots of it. There's also ways to go in and solo a clip, which you have over here on the uh, on the toolbar, uh, which is option S. And this essentially lets you see just that one clip. So if I selected again my uh, fountain here, I could do option S to solo it and notice everything else grays out except this one clip. 
So that can be helpful if you're saying, what's this one clip sound like? You can use option S to solo it. However, uh, I use V way more frequently just to disable one clip, or if I have a music track, I just select that track, hit V to disable it, and then later on I can hit V again with it selected to enable that clip. So that's those two shortcuts, both very useful, but it makes sense that Command C, I guess, moved on because paste attributes would not exist if you couldn't copy the, uh, <laughs> the clip. So that makes sense there. Now, the next two shortcuts, we have Command B, which blades at the playhead or skimmer location, and that went up against the grave accent, which overrides clip connections. Both very uh, helpful shortcuts. Uh, the grave accent, I think, is, is you know, even though it made it way up here, I think I still think it's underrated, and I'll show you why here. So the with these shortcuts, when you have a, uh, a clip selected here and you click and drag it, so I'm just going to drag it over to the right here, notice that connected clip is moving with it. It's part of the mag magnetic timeline. This one on the top, as I move these around and rearrange them, it, the connected clips stay with whatever clip they're connected to. And that almost always is, is very useful and something that you would want to have, right? But in some cases, you want to move clips around and not uh, bring the connected clips with them. So that's where the grave accent comes in. And it, it's on a, at least on a US keyboard, it's above the tab key or to the left of the number one key. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold my uh, grave accent here. And you'll notice this little symbol comes up to the right. I hope this comes through the live stream. It looks like it's going to. But there's an orange bubble that pops up with a line going through it. And this is a very confusing symbol if you don't know what it's trying to, uh, to show you. But what it's showing is there's a little, uh, there's a clip connection essentially there. Those little tiny lines, which if I drag this up, uh, let me see, I've got my arrow. Yeah, if I, I think it's, we're not connected here. So let me drag this one up. So notice to the left, the lower left corner of this clip that I'm dragging around, there's like a line being drawn down to the clip below it. Or if I do the same thing with the audio, it's going up from the top left corner. Um, it's very thin, so it may not come across on the stream. If that's the case, open Final Cut, you'll see these clip connections. So what, when you hold the grave accent in, what that orange symbol is, is essentially showing you that clip connection, but it's got a line through it. So it's saying, we're going to ignore those clip connections, which means if I drag this fire, fireworks clip, all the other clips stay right where they are, right? So um, kind of cool, because I can move all those around, and then those three clips, this one, this one, and the audio clip down here from the fireworks, all of those stayed exactly where they were. Let me do Command Z. I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to do it one more time. Here's without holding the key down. If I drag this, notice all of those clips are moving with it, and they're being rearranged in that way. Whereas if I hold the grave accent and then drag these, it's just moving that one clip. All of those other clips don't move anywhere in time. They stay exactly where they were. So that's the grave accent, which I think is a, a fabulous tool. Um, let me now show you this other one, Command B which blades at the playhead or the skimmer location. This one is uh, very useful, but I also want to show while I'm doing this demo with the next one, which is B to activate the blade tool. So command B and B, both very useful tools. They both got voted on to the next round. They're the, the popular shortcuts here. Um, B, by the way, went up against M to add a marker. I'll show that one as well in this demo. So what's the difference between command B and just B. Well, let's sh let me show you. So uh, when you move across the timeline here, wherever it is, if I do Command B, notice it makes a cut right where the skimmer is. Or if I'm up above and I do Command B, it makes a cut right where the playhead is. So Command B is uh, hands down a shortcut that every Final Cut editor uh, should use because editing, uh, most of editing is making cuts. Uh, that's where original film editing came in. You had a razor blade that you would cut the physical film with and piece two pieces together. And that's as basic of an edit as you can get. So as I'm skimming across, again, just one more time, if I do Command B, it blades at that position. I can then, I have my arrow already active, so I can just click, delete, click, delete, delete little segments out of here if I want to. Right, makes sense. So that is 
blading at the playhead or skimmer location, whichever one is active. The other option is to hit the letter B, and again, B for blade. It's the razor blade tool or blade tool. That activates the blade tool, and now you can just go and click, click, click. You can just click anywhere that you want to cut at a spot. And then it's same thing as doing Command B. It's just the difference is this is a tool that you don't have to do a shortcut with. You can just go across. Maybe you're looking up in the viewer here as I'm running down. If I wanted to cut at a certain spot, I can just click, and it cuts right there. Also, with the uh, the razor blade tool, just another uh, tip here. If you hold down the Shift key, notice on the, the razor blade itself, there's a second blade that comes down below it. What this does, it'll blade across multiple clips. So if I click here, notice it cut the first clip, second clip, and third clip. All of them got cut at that spot. So that's a way to use the razor blade tool using Shift B. So the, the blade tool, very helpful um, with any tool. And these are your tools over here, right? These are the shortcuts on the right. With any of these tools, if you're on the arrow tool and you just hold the letter down for that tool, in this case, blade, I'm just going to hold B. You hold B, you can go and make your cuts. And then when you let go of B, it goes back to whatever tool was selected before. In this case, the arrow select tool. Uh, so that's another tip for using the blade tool, right? So that's, sh uh, that's uh, command B and B. And then the other one there was M for adding a marker. So wherever you are on your, uh, on your timeline, if you hit the letter M, notice it adds a marker in here. It can be kind of hard to see because it's small. Uh, there's our marker. You can double click on a marker to bring up the ability to, to edit that marker. You can add a name to it, or you can change its type. This is a standard marker. You can add a to-do item, which will make it a red marker, or if it's completed by checking that box, it'll go green. And you also have an option to add it as a chapter marker. So if you're making a longer form movie, maybe you're making a DVD, you can have chapters throughout your project there as well. Now, uh, with markers, I guess the one other thing I want to point out here, you can go into the index, and you have your tags, and there's a marker type of tag here as well. So you do have that in here as you're creating and adding all those markers. So you can use that for navigation. Um, but yeah, markers can also be exported. If they're chapter markers, you can send that out. Um, one thing I, I did see that confused some people is the way this chapter marker looks. So again, let me add another one back here. If I hit M and then M again, I'm just hitting M twice, it brings up this editing. And I'll go over to my chapter marker here and I'll hit done. So uh, I now have two chapter markers. Notice if I click off of them, they're just orange, right? There's a little orange tag. But if you click on the marker, there's this other uh, pin here that shows up. That pin is to set the thumbnail or the little picture that's going to show up for that chapter, which if you're working with DVDs or maybe a Blu-ray project, or even if you're exporting this to QuickTime, these uh, thumbnails can show up. So if you click and drag this, you'll see in the viewer we can select which thumbnail we want to actually use for this chapter. So if this chapter marker is actually for the fireworks, I'd want to use a thumbnail maybe with the firework exploding. I could have it even right there. Or if I want to see with more streaks, I can select it and put it there. Uh, some people have thought that if you drag this out, you're saying that everywhere in this section is part of the chapter. Um, I think I even thought that at one point. That is not the case. This is just a thumbnail. And really, if you put this somewhere, it would have no effect on the actual playback of your project. You, would, you could still navigate between each of these markers, the chapter markers. The pin itself does nothing. It's just for that thumbnail picture. OK, I digress from that. Let's go back over and see what our next and actually last two shortcuts are that are going to make it on uh, to the top 16 here. And Command 6 allows you to go to the Color Inspector. Again, this is the Windows-based shortcut, meaning physical areas of the interface or the window of Final Cut. Um, so Command 6 went up against Command 4 to show or hide the inspector. And spoiler alert, Command 6 <laughs> goes on and is going to make it into the next round. Uh, this one, out of any shortcut that's in the bracket, this was probably the shortcut that surprised me the most. I did not expect um, Go to Color Inspector to be up here. 
So the way that this works is here I am in the timeline, right? If I hit Command-6, notice in the inspector, it's now on the color inspector, right? Command-6 brings up the color inspector. So again, let me, let me go out of it. Let's say look at the information for this clip. Here it is, and I do Command-6. It goes right to the color inspector, which if you do Command-Comma, it brings up preferences. And you have options in here that you can select uh, what you want to change under the general preferences, color corrections. Right now, the default, and I believe this is the default if you brand new install Final Cut, it's going to be set to the color board. You could change this to the color wheels, curves, uh, any of these options here. So if I do set it to color wheels, notice it changed in the background, which means if I do Command-6, it just goes into the empty color inspector there with my... Uh, my tools here ready to, to go through. So uh, if you like the wheels, awesome, you can do that. Let's go and make some changes here. Just make a whole bunch of random adjustments so that you can see there's actually changes happening. If I go back to the viewer, or even if I hide the inspector completely, if I do Command-6, it goes and brings us right back to the color inspector. We can see the color wheels there that uh, I just made all those changes with on this specific clip. So that is Command-6. If you have been color correcting and you're big into that, that's a great shortcut to know and to understand. Now, the other one that was on our list was Command-4. Uh, let me switch back over to the keynote here. So notice Command-4 shows or hides the inspector, where Command-6 is a go-to command. It's go to the color inspector. So slightly different um, types of shortcuts there, if you would, uh, but it is essentially showing you the same thing. Uh, but let me show you the difference here. If I hit Command-6 again and again and again, I can hit it as many times as I want. It's not doing anything. It's go to the color inspector. Once I'm at the color inspector, I can't leave it, right, using that shortcut. So it's a one-way shortcut. Versus Command-4, which hides the inspector or shows the inspector, regardless of what's there. Right now, it's the color inspector. If I go to the video inspector, here's all those. Command-4, hide, show. That's what Command-4 does. It's the same thing as hitting this button at the top right of the uh, toolbar that's at the top here. can show or hide that uh, inspector. So I thought Command-4 was a more useful shortcut for showing or hiding that area. Uh, but you guys like Command-6 more for going to the color inspector. And... Uh, I guess it makes sense. I mean, the, the color correcting is an extremely important part of editing. If you're listening to this and you don't do any color correction, uh, you're missing out. That's a huge area. That takes you, a lot of people, that's kind of the, the step, right, when they're moving in from just being an amateur uh, home movie editing, basic editing. That's when you're starting to get into the more advanced stuff. If you're getting into color correction, huge spot. That's a great thing to know. So I'm glad that everyone voted for the color inspector and having that one show uh, up because that's a, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's switch back to the key, key uh, the keynote here. So those are our shortcuts. We got the eight shortcuts that are going to be moving on to the next round of the bracket here, which you can view the bracket and print it at anawesomeguide.com. Uh, if you just go to anawesomeguide.com, you know, there's a link on there for you to see the bracket. Uh, it should be updated right now. I was having some issues with uh, the iCloud stuff, but that should be updated so you can see the bracket as it shows now. But I do also like to do a little video so you can see uh, what's actually happening. So let's do this guy. Let's go up to full screen. Where did my arrow go? There we go. So let's full screen this and take a look at it. I'm just going to scrub through. So uh, on the left column, the right column, we're zooming way out now. It's really hard to see all these, but these are the shortcuts that went through the various rounds, right, to move on and get us to where we are now. And this whole project, I might do a whole episode on building something like this. This is actually very, very basic work. It's just tedious, but there are a ton of layers involved to this. I did create this using Motion. This is not a keynote or PowerPoint or anything like that. This was created with Motion so I could do the virtual cameras here and zoom in and out. But let's go ahead and play this. And this is going to show you basically the same shortcuts we just saw, right, being demoed and used. But you're going to see how the voting fell with each of the shortcuts. Uh, 
and the ones that make it on to round four with the essential eight, which is coming up. So command C went up against V. And if you remember command C for copying stuff, very popular. In order to do paste attributes or anything else, you need to copy. So command C definitely got more votes on there. Um, not as much of a blowout. I mean, it, it got maybe about two thirds of the votes. So it wasn't a, a big swing. Whereas command B got way more votes than the grave accent. Uh, I believe that overriding clip connections is kind of, you know, a more advanced thing in there, but everyone needs to be able to cut. So command B is definitely a very useful one there. So that moved on. And then we looked at command four just now with going to the inspector, showing or hiding it, and then going to the uh, color inspector with command six. And this was very close. This was uh, down to the wire. Last couple votes in is what swung this to command six. And then M uh, did not get almost any votes. Uh, B for activating the blade tool. I think it's way more popular, way more useful than adding markers. Right? So uh, that was kind of the left side of the, the bracket there. Um, I am, I'm, I'm curious if blade beats out the color inspector. And on the upper side of it, if we go and get um, our command B, if those two go up against each other, I think that'll be an interesting uh, battle there. And then uh, swinging over to the other side of the bracket here, we had right arrow going up against S to enable or disable skimming, which you saw the demos for. Right arrow is used all over the place for navigating and also just editing text and other things. So that's going to move on to face the space bar. And these next battles, these next rounds, I'm very excited to see how it goes. But the space bar got way more votes than option space bar, as expected. And it'll go on to face the right arrow. Moving on up, I was uh, nervous in the last round when shift B and, and shift command V went up against each other. Those paste attributes and blade speed, it was kind of back and forth. I know blade speed was lead leading for a while, uh, but shift command V beat it out. And it does in this round as well. Paste attributes uh, beats out rendering a selection. However, not by much. Um, Control R definitely held on there for, for some time. So uh, Shift Command V is then going to go up against Command Z, which as someone who has Shift Command V going on to win it all, this is probably my mo most nerve-wracking battle here. Command Z is just such a popular shortcut. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that one wins, but I hope it doesn't. We'll see, we'll see what happens, though. So that is how everything played out. In round three, the saver 16, time saver 16, right? I don't know. Names are last minute. Please, if you got better ideas for these names, we'll change them for next year and get, get something better on here. But those are the eight shortcuts that are our essential eight shortcuts, which is round four. Uh, and you can see all the matchups here. Again, command C going up against command B, command four going up against M, command Z going up against shift command V and the space bar going up against the right arrow. Uh, and depending on how that voting goes this week, we'll see the next round with just four shortcuts. We're getting really, really close to figuring out which shortcut is going to be the 2019 shortcut of the year. And again, you can vote through Instagram. You can also email finalcutprohelpinme.com with what your favorite shortcuts are. If they're included here, um, awesome. I'll give them an extra vote. You can go to anawesomeguide.com to print out the bracket and follow it uh, live on there to see how things go. So uh, this is not just a normal episode or a uh, special episode of Final Cut Pro Help Live that's about the bracket. This is a normal episode. So let's get a couple more question and answers in. Uh, I'm only going to do a few here. But again, finalcutprohelpatme.com, if you do have questions, send them on over. I try to answer them directly to you in the moment and through the email or however you've uh, reached out to me. But I also like to take the best questions and do demos on here. And a lot of times, a question that you have might not come across too well through just an email or something else. So uh, this first question comes from James, and he used the contact form on anawesomeguide.com. You can go on there and fill it out, and it'll send me a message directly there. But he filled that out actually earlier today, and he asked, if I have only Final Cut Pro 10, can I use Motion 5 templates in my Final Cut Pro 10 videos without owning Motion? 
Also, can I edit the text or other elements in the motion template with Final Cut Pro 10? And this is an ex excellent question because if you're, new, especially if you're new to Final Cut and the whole Apple ecosystem of these apps and the way Final Cut Pro 10 interacts with motion and plugins and other apps, uh, it can be very confusing. So let me show you this and I'm gonna go through kind of the whole process of getting a template, how it works and how you use it. So the first thing is in our, uh, in our Final Cut browser here at the top left, I'm gonna go up and click on the title and generators sidebar to show that. And on the left column, if we go into the titles, here are the titles that I have here. And I, I do have some third party things like FX Factory Pro and uh, some other things here, but you'll see your, your normal standard titles are in here as well uh, that you get. So let's, let's say you wanna add something, right? And it could be a generator, it could be an effect that you see down here in the effects browser. But if you wanna go and add something, you're gonna have to go on the internet to add it. So I'm gonna open up Safari here and I'm gonna go over to anawesomeguide.com and if you haven't been here, I've put up an adjustment layer so that you can go and download this. Final Cut doesn't include an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna download this and we're gonna use this as a template and I'm gonna explain this whole product. So I'm gonna click on my download, right? And this is just stored on a Dropbox uh, site here. So uh, when I go here at the top right, I click on more and I just do a direct download of this file. It downloads it into my downloads folder. Let's click on the finder here, go to downloads. And here's my at Final Cut Pro help folder with the adjustment layer. If I go into it, there is the adjustment layer and then some thumbnails. This last thing here called adjustment layer, you'll notice is a motion document. Now I, I do have motion installed on this computer. I'm not gonna remove it just for this one demo. So mine does show up as this letter T, it's purple, all the good stuff, right? If you don't have motion installed, it may not look like this. It may just be a white blank document uh, to kind of signify that you can't open that. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. If you go back to my downloads page here, I've included the steps, they didn't include a video here, a demo for this and some tips and some other things on here. So the way that this works is to in actually install this template to make it available inside of Final Cut, we have to move this folder and not the adjustment layer folder. I'm going one more back to the at Final Cut Pro help folder and I'm gonna move that into my movies folder and then into a folder called motion templates and then into another folder called titles and I'm gonna drop it right inside of titles. And what that does is th this is the, the path or the hierarchy that Final Cut is using to find those templates. So if you're, and you'll notice on the website, I've put all this information up there. If you don't have motion, you probably don't have a motion templates folder or a titles folder. So you're gonna need to create those manually. And you can do that just by right clicking on a spot and saying, or control clicking and saying new folder and just call it uh, motion templates, make sure it's in the movies folder. And then inside of that, create one called titles or transitions generators effects, depending on what you're creating. After you do that though, this is a very important step that a lot of people skip. After you do that, you have to hit command I on the selected folder, in this case, motion templates, go into the info under more info, or sorry, under name and extension, and it'll say motion templates, and you need it to say dot localized. And that's what I've said here on the website, I've included those, both the motion templates folder and the titles folder need to have that dot localized uh, extension put onto it. The reason for that is that's just how Final Cut works and that's how it's gonna find those folders for you. So uh, that's kind of it for installing a template. Now, some templates that are built out there um, may have an installer like the FX Factory Pro or something else, but um, this was just kind of talking in general about motion projects, which many uh, plugins and add-ons are. They were just created with motion and that's how you get them. Uh, but this is how you install them. You just put them right there and that's all you have to do. If we go back here into Final Cut, uh, you may have noticed there, but the second I click back into it, no, there we go, we see the at Final Cut Pro help titles folder and there's my adjustment layer. And if I click and drag that down, it is a title, it acts like a title, but it's an adjustment layer. So there it is, and that's how you install it. Now let me go back to the folders for a quick second just to 
show you here because I, I, this question comes up all the time. You have to make sure that you have a the motion templates, which is essentially the general category of templates, right? You then have a more specific category, which is titles, which is basically saying, where do you want this to show up inside of Final Cut Pro 10? And in our case, we want it to be in the titles folder. If we wanted it in generators, we could go into the generators folder and put it there. Uh, but then you need a category folder, right? Which is what I've created with app Final Cut Pro help. So that's what shows up on the left side here. So notice we have the giant category that's titles. And I'm going to close generators too. those first two categories. And if you open it up, then we have a whole bunch of categories for other templates. So you need it to, you need a folder for those templates, which is what this column's for. And then you have a folder that contains the actual motion project or template. And it should include some thumbnails, which the thumbnail is what shows up right here that we see. And you have media, small, all that good stuff, right? So that's how you can install a template. Now, I will show one other thing, and this is on the website as well, is in this case, the motion uh, adjustment layer template that I just downloaded, I created that using motion 5.4. So with the question that came out to me um, earlier today from James, he was basically saying, can I use Motion 5 templates? So the answer is definitely yes, but you want to keep an eye on that version of Motion because if I have a Motion 5.4 version, that's designed to work with Final Cut Pro 10 version 10.4 uh, or later. So I, I've had this issue very recently where someone reached out and they were using an older version of Final Cut and they tried to download this adjustment layer and it did not work. And that's because they were using an older version of Final Cut. So just keep that in mind. If you go through some uh, steps here, all of these, you install it, it looks like it's exactly the way it's supposed to be and it's not working. It could be that you have an older version or a not compatible version of Final Cut Pro to work with that motion template. Hopefully that that part makes sense there, James. And then the, the second part of your question, you said show, uh, uh, basically how can you edit elements of that template, right? So uh, for that, let me just go to uh, a title here. I have my basic 3D title. I'm just going to click and drag that down here. And you said motion template, but yeah, you can do everything. Let me actually do a more complex template here. Uh, let's do... Which one looks interesting? Yeah, let's let's do this one. Just point point template, whatever, right? This may be an FX factory one, but that's fine too. With any of these templates, you're saying can you go through and uh, edit things like text and other elements that are in it? So with this template, you can see I have the title that's here. Uh, there's a drop zone. That's what this little arrow is that you can actually put a video in and, and all kinds of stuff. So you can certainly 100% edit these templates using the inspector. So uh, there's a going to be a titles inspector and then from more of a text inspector. So when you do these, the text inspector allows you to select an actual piece of text and you can go in and change things like the font, uh, change the size of it. Um, if you go down, there's the face, which is the color. You can hit show on the right. You can actually adjust the color of this. Brings up my color window, which is one of my favorites. And I'll go in and select the color here to match it. You can add an outline, a glow. Most of these things that I'm doing right here, you can do with just about any title that you work with. But then you have the, the first inspector here, which for me, because this is a came out of the title section, it is the, the title inspector but it could be the generator inspector if it's generator or an effect, other things there. And you'll notice a list of things here, but they're all under this published parameters, right? And that's the key. If this template published and whoever designed it, if they publish the parameters, you can make those changes directly here inside of Final Cut, right? So that means you can go in and change the color of this, which this looks like the drop shadow color. You can uncheck, disable, or enable the drop shadow. Uh, we have the angle for it. They have the different wells here for adding media. So I could just drag a clip. Uh, let me drag it from the video. Let's grab this one. Where did I put that title? There it is. Select it. So a well, you can drop a, a video into the wells here, and that'll go through and uh, use that as the drop zone you can see in there. 
Um, I don't know where, where's that person? There it is. So that's put in the drop zone right here, right for that video. So you can go and make those edits, right? But if, especially if you're getting third party templates, they may not have published certain parameters. And if they're not published, you won't be able to make changes to those parameters. So as an example here with this template, um, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, notice this line here with this circle on here. I can't do anything with that line. I can't move it or, or really make adjustments. I could certainly go in here with the transform tool and move it around, but I can't drag these points. However, if I, um, with our, our template, if I go back to the title and generator sidebar here, uh, let me go and find that title. Which one was that point, right? If I right click on this point, uh, this point title, I can say open a copy in motion. And so this is where, where you can get around these things if you do have motion installed. And the question was, can you do all this stuff without motion in it? My, my general answer is yes, but if the developer of that template hasn't included the ability to make whatever change you're trying to make, then you're not going to be able to do it, right? So as an example, here we are with that same template inside of Motion, and I see all of my different elements in here. I can go into my different tools, make changes to certain things. Uh, I can add layers and, and all kinds of other good stuff right here. So I think, yeah, let me dig this one apart. Did not rehearse this part, so we'll see how uh, how well it is. But yeah, here we go. So this line, right, is this one here, and they have the circles and everything as, as slightly different um, shapes. But notice how I get the option to move it around here inside of Final Cut, and I did not have that when I was, or sorry, inside Motion here. I did not have that option inside of Final Cut. So if I go into the inspector, go to Geometry, we can see the different control points here. I can even see the roundness for that circle. Um, let's say I want to have the ability to make those changes. I can definitely go in and do that. I can even go up to the properties here. And let's say I just want to be able to move that circle around. To the right of each of these, there's a little drop down uh, arrow here. And there's an option at the bottom here that says publish. So I'm just going to say publish for that position. I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, position of the outline. And let's even do the position in the line. Why not? Now, motion is a whole down of the beast. If you're watching this and you're like, why didn't you just create a rig? And it, that's not the point of this. It's just to show that you could do these. So I could update the original. I'm going to save it as a duplicate just to have this copy in here. And I'm going to save it. Uh, let's call it new template point for the template name. And I'm going to put it into my at Final Cut Pro help category doesn't need a theme, and we'll just hit publish. Goes through and publishes almost instantly because there's not much to this one. Quit motion, look at my app, Final Cut Pro Help. Here's my new template, right, that I just created a copy of. I'm gonna drag that down. And now what you'll notice is with this title selected, if I go up to the title side of it, notice at the bottom here, we now have the position. So let me compare these two side by side. So this is the first one, notice at the bottom here, nothing. And if I click the second one, now I can see the positions. All three of those positions are here because I chose to publish them. And I can move that little circle around. So I can move the circle. Maybe I move it over here. I want to move the position of the outline. We'll move it right about there. And then we'll adjust the line so it's going into it. Right. So I made some changes to that template and was able to adjust that. So James, I hope that answers your question is, yes, you can certainly install those templates as long as they're in a compatible, they were created with a compatible version for your Final Cut version. And can you make edits to the text and elements? Yes, you can definitely make edits as long as the changes you're trying to make, like the elements you're trying to adjust, have been published into that template. So like the position of these circles, I can now make those changes directly here in Final Cut because I published them. So if there's something you're trying to change, maybe you got a template from someone and you're not able to make the adjustments you want to make, try reaching out to that developer of the template and the creator of it and see if they're willing to update it or maybe publish those parameters that you're looking to uh, have change and have control of. Otherwise, on an awesomeguide.com, you can go on there and if you go to the, the homepage here, there's a link. Uh, to get motion at the bottom here. If you click on that one, it gives me a little bit of a, a kickback. So definitely, if you can, <laughs> go over and hit that. But motion is a $50 app. 
at least here in the U.S. And I mean, it's extremely powerful. If you can get used to creating and working with motion, um, you're going to make your skills as an editor much more advanced. Now, I totally get it. Motion is a pretty complex app. You know, understand and get control of Final Cut first, then you can grow into motion. But that's just something to uh, consider and make sure that you do look at that as a, uh, a next step there. So that was the first question. Uh, I'm only, only going to go through three questions here in the Q&A uh, just for time's sake. But a second question came from a post that I saw in a Final Cut Pro or in the Final Cut Pro 10 user group on Facebook. And the question was asked, is it possible to create center at cut, quote, center at cut, cross dissolve transition in Final Cut Pro 10 on multiple video clips? There are two parts to this question. The first is how do you actually create that kind of a dissolve? And the second is how do you apply it to multiple clips or multiple edit points? So this can sound very confusing if you don't know uh, what this person is trying to ask, right? But this should uh, hopefully clear it up when you see the demo here. So inside of this project, let me get rid of my transform tool. I'm going to hide the uh, browser there. We don't need that right now. I'm going to hide the effects browser as well. So um, what this person is trying to do, they, they actually used to be a Premiere and Adobe Premiere uh, editor. And so for creating this transition, because you're essentially trying to recreate a behavior from Adobe Premiere in Final Cut, um, but you're, you're creating it on clips that don't have available media. Because normally, if you go in and click on a, a clip here and you hit Command-T for transition, it's going to go and add in the default transition, which in most cases is a cross-dissolve if you haven't changed it. However, in this case, and, and the person that's asking this question too, the, they don't have available media beyond the edges of the clip. So if they're going to create a transition using just Final Cut's built-in tools, it's going to be a ripple transition, which means it's going to have to shorten your entire project. It's going to shorten these clips to create that transition. And this is what the person that asks this question is trying to avoid, right? So there's a couple parts of this. Essentially, what we need to do is create available media at the beginning and the ends of these clips, which you can certainly do. I'm going to use Command Plus here to zoom in a little bit. And one way to do that is just click and drag on the left and the right. It creates a little bit of available media. I can use Command T. Boom, it puts in the cross dissolve, right? And it's there. So that's great, except if you're trying to avoid shortening the clips. So um, there is not a command which is going to create it and add in still frames or other things. I, my personal opinion is that this is not in Final Cut because most of the time adding in still frames or slowing it down doesn't look as good as having the actual extended media there. But there's certain scenarios where you're not going to have it anyway. So what you'd usually want to do with this is go to the edit point, go left one frame, and you can use Option F to create a freeze frame. Then you can hit Option F again. Now that it's on the, the guy's neck here, I can do Option F again, create another freeze frame. I can then shorten these freeze frames to about 15 frames or so, because we're going to have about a one second transition. And then I'll click on that transition point, hit Command T, add my cross dissolve. And if I play it, notice it's kind of going up to her nose there. And then it freezes, transitions to the next clip, and continues on. Right? Makes sense? So that's how you can add a transition without having any of that ex extra media. So that's kind of the first side of it. And the second part of this is how can you apply that to basically your entire project? So uh, this person in their chat, they said they had a couple hundred clips that they wanted to apply this on. Usually it's going to be about 100, maybe 200 or more edit points that they're trying to add this to. So that's a pain. There's not an easy command that I could find to be able to apply that. One of my thoughts was what you could do is select the clip and do Command R to bring up the retime editor. Uh, you could do your blade speed using Shift B, and then you could slow down the end of it. And you could do this to the beginning of and the end of the clip, right? To slow down each part. So this, you can even click on this and make it a still as well. I was hoping you'd be able to do that and then select the clip, say copy and paste adjustments my favorite shortcut, right? I was hoping you can do that to the rest of the clips. And then 
you could just add the transitions and you'd be good. Uh, but as it turns out, that's not something that's included uh, with the paste attributes. It's not able to create or copy and paste those variable speed changes, at least that I could find. If you're listening to this and you're like, no, you could do it like this, uh, please put a comment below. Let me know because uh, I, I dug around and couldn't find it. So what that means is kind of we have to go through and do these freeze frames on every single one of the clips, which again, I couldn't find a quick and easy way to do it. So I dug around and, and decided, okay, there's some other apps out there and there's things like Automator and other, other things that exist. So there's this one called Keyboard Maestro and I'm not endorsing this app by any means, but this is one that I kind of used and was able to figure something out here. And I apologize if this does not go smoothly here in the demo. Uh, I have a lot of apps running to get this stream out to you, and it's possible that this little script is not going to work. But essentially what Keyboard Maestro does is, is kind of what Automator does, very similar. Uh, but I just found for these specific keyboard keystrokes that we're doing, this interface was a little bit easier to work with. And what I've done is just created a script. Because if all this entire episode, the whole reason we're doing this bracket is because keyboard shortcuts are extremely powerful. And everything we just did with the freeze frames, with adding the transitions, everything can be done using keyboard shortcuts. So we can just create a script, let that script run, and it'll just go and do the, the steps for us. So um, that's kind of going to be my recommendation. And you can use Keyboard Maestro or another one. Hopefully it'll work for you. Essentially what I've done with this script, I'm going to let me close these out here just so you can see the general uh, overview of this. But essentially I said, go ahead and activate Final Cut Pro. Press Command-2 to go to the timeline, and then use the Home key to go to the beginning of the timeline, because I want this to go through the entire project. Uh, once you're at the beginning, it's going to execute this code over and over and over again, which is down arrow to go to the next edit point, uh, left arrow to go back one frame. It's going to create the freeze frame. Then it's going to create another freeze frame of the next clip, which is exactly what you saw me do in the demo just a second ago. And then it's going to go and repeat that for every single one of those clips. Right? Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now, unfortunately, the thing I've been having problems with in this user account, which, of course, it works in the other one and not this one, it's just the way that it ends. It's supposed to end when I click the mouse button, but I don't know if, if OBS or another software I have here is just interfering with that. But I might have to force quit Final Cut if it doesn't stop, and that's the reason I'm doing that. So, um, so yeah, this is ready to go. So let me go back here. I'm going to do Shift-Z uh, to zoom to the timeline so you can see the whole thing here. And then I'm going to go ahead and try this uh, little um, filter here. And we'll see. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's running the way it's supposed to. So let's go back up here. Let's try playing and see if it works. There we go. So notice it's creating the um, each of the transitions there and adding it. And yeah, see, this is the part I couldn't get. It couldn't stop. So I'm going to have to force quit Final Cut, which is unfortunate. Ooh, and even that's not working well. Hopefully. Yeah, this is, see, this is what happens when, uh, <laughs> when it works at, on the other account and not this one. All right, so there we go. Unfortunately there, I quit out of Safari too. Let me reload everything. Hopefully I didn't <laughs> lose my uh, stream and I'm still with you guys. All right, so anyway, yeah, it looks like we're still on there. So that's a little script that goes through and puts on those transitions and everything, right? So let me reopen that project. And I don't even think it saved it because of the force quitting. That's unfortunate and it wasn't gone. Let's try it again because I, I like this script. I like when it went and worked. Now, one thing you might have noticed in there is I had to shorten the clip. So this is actually something else you can do. If you go into the preferences under editing, there's an option here for the still image. It's creating it at four seconds, but I actually just want this one second transition. So I'm gonna change this to point, uh, what is it, point uh, five seconds. Yeah, half a second. Um, cause that should be, uh, because this project's 30 frames per second. Half a second should be about 15 frames. Uh, so that should uh, give us just the right length of a still image uh, that this will work. So let's open up Maestro again. Let's see if you'll run this time. Yeah, notice how it's creating a much, uh, much smaller still image there in with each of them and then adding that transition. And hopefully. 
actually that stopped it. And then if I do Command Plus and zoom in here, notice how it added that transition. If I play this project, you see the one clip, it transitions with the still to the next one, and we're able to continue on. So um, again, it's a script. It's not something that's built into Final Cut. You are going to have to work with it and, you know, be for your specific situations there. But what I will say is if this is something you're doing frequently, especially if you have to make a couple hundred transitions uh, in stills like that, it's going to be worth it to take the time to create that script. And you once it's created, you have it. You can just keep reusing it over and over and over again. Um, so that's a way that you can do that. Uh, however, with all that being said, to, to do that kind of a workaround is kind of a pain. Feels like it might maybe should be something that's built in so that instead of just uh, Final Cut saying, hey, do you want to create a transition and have it shorten it? Maybe there should be an option for it. So if you run into something like that, I recommend going up to the Final Cut Pro menu here, and there's an option to provide Final Cut Pro feedback. And when you do that, it opens up apple.com slash feedback, specifically the Final Cut Pro form here. And read the instructions, it'll let you know what's up, but you wanna fill this out with as much detail as you can to provide this feedback to Apple. Now don't just say in the comments here, uh, I think you should have an option to, uh, you know, select make still image and extend it, not just do a ripple edit. Um, that's very brief. It's not enough information. You really want to tell them why you want that. Uh, let them know how it affects you, how it affects your workflow, because that's the way that Apple knows and looks at these and reads these. They're going to categorize these. And if you barely, if you have a one sentence request, it might be enough and it might be something someone else has requested and they can just check off on a, a box there. But if there's a lot more details. You can help them understand why you need that feature, right? So don't just assume because it's a feature in another app, it's going to work well here in Final Cut and it's needed. Uh, really let them know why you're doing that and try to fill out this form with as much detail as you can there. Um, awesome. So that is uh, that question there. I then wanted to talk about a little bit about the update that came out. So uh, if you don't know, if you haven't updated yet, this past month we had Final Cut Pro 10.4.6 uh, came out. And actually, I shrunk this window too soon. I took some screenshots here. So when you open Final Cut after the update, you might see a message like this that says, what's new in Final Cut Pro 10? Now, in this specific version, the .6 version, uh, only that first major item there, the compatibility detection and conversion, is really what's new in this version. Workflow extensions, batch share, and video noise reduction was part of a, a major update previously. Um, however, many people just hit continue. They don't read this. They don't do anything on here. But I strongly recommend that you hit the complete feature list button, which will take you onto the internet here. And you'll be able to see each of these features. You can even click on learn more under a feature and it will give you a document and sometimes even video demos of what this feature does. So if you are working with legacy media and I recommend going in and reading this document, it gives you all the formats that are not compatible. But in the update, if you go up to the file menu, there's an option now to check media for compatibility. And if you've been editing with older formats, this is something you're going to want to pay attention to. You're going to want to open up your old libraries and make sure that they can be upgraded and that they're going to work with future versions of Mac OS. This is not a Final Cut thing. This is Mac OS. Once um, most likely the next version comes out, uh, you're going to want to make sure you have compatible videos on all of this. And if you're getting an error when you hit check media for compatibility, if some a message comes up and says, "Hey, you're, you don't you don't have uh, uh, you already have uncompatible media," you should get an option to convert it, and it'll do everything for you. But if you run into any issues with that, please reach out to me. Let me know um, because that's something that uh, once you upgrade to the next version, most likely the next version of Mac OS, uh, it's it's hard to go back to the previous version. So uh, make sure to check on that stuff and understand what messages are coming up you're using Final Cut Pro, it is a professional application. If you're not a professional or you don't consider yourself a professional and you're using it, uh, there's a lot of things in here that you might not understand and you can get away with it in the editing part of it, but this update and this compatibility stuff is major, so you wanna make sure to understand it. Now, 
in a similar fashion, um, when you go and open up a library, like this was just the default untitled library, you might see a message like this that says you must be updated, that library must be updated to work with this version of Final Cut Pro, in this case, this update. So updated libraries can't be opened in earlier versions of Final Cut Pro. It's a key thing to know, right? So if you have multiple computers, maybe you have an older computer that has an older version of Final Cut, and you update your newer computer, you won't be able to go back and edit on the older version of Final Cut. So just keep that in mind. And uh, if you want to update, awesome. If you don't want to, you hit cancel on that screen. Now, with all that said, what am I getting to? Make a backup of your content. Make a backup of Final Cut. If you go into your Applications folder, Shift-Command-A from the desktop, you'll see Final Cut Pro is listed as an application here. You can actually right-click on this and say Compress Final Cut Pro. And what that'll do is create a copy or a compressed copy of Final Cut in its current version. So if you're on 10.4.5, make a compressed version of that, then update to Final Cut Pro 10.4.6. What that allows you to do is you then have a copy of this older version. So if you need to go back to the older version at some point, you can do that. All right, so that's just a tip. I've mentioned that in many other videos. If you have questions with it, uh, leave a comment below or send me an email. All right, final question for today. Unless you have one, you can always put it in the chat. But final question for today is, came from Instagram. Um, and someone used it at Final Cut Pro Help Mention. And they're using a shortcut to create an event and reopen minimized windows. Now, the way this comment was sent, I think it was just a message, actually. It was a little confusing uh, because the person said, I, want, I would like to understand how you're using those shortcuts. Um, and they, it was kind of like, eh, what's going on? But uh, essentially, there's, there was three shortcuts that were listed because they were listing Shift-N. Um, which creates a normal speed segment, and it's just part of the, the uh, retime tool. So if I hit Command-R, for example, and I shorten this one uh, with it selected, if I hit uh, the shortcut Shift-N, that's going to change it from being slowed down to being a normal speed uh, change. I believe with this person, though, they reached out, they said they typed it wrong, So, but that's what Shift-N does. Uh, the other one, then, we have an option uh, for creating a new event. They were wondering how to do that. Option N is the shortcut to create a new event. And notice it just brings down the drop down menu. Same thing as going up to File, New Event. But if you want to create a new event, just Option N there. You could also use Command N to create a new project. Some great tools there. And then the last one, which I had to do a little bit of research because I just in my own workflow, I never do this. But they said, uh, if I've minimized Final Cut Pro, how can I bring back that minimized window without clicking on it, right? So this was interesting. So I'm going to minimize Final Cut just using the little yellow shortcut there. We'll close out of our compatibility. So notice down here on the dock on the right side, we have Final Cut Pro minimized, and I can click on it to bring it back. But if I've minimized it, how can you get back to it without using a shortcut, right? And it's a little confusing, so I'm going to take you through this. But what you're going to want to do is hold Command and press Tab, which brings up your keyboard switcher here. Um, this keyboard maestro app's open. I'm actually going to quit that one because that interferes with my Command Tab. So Command Tab, here we go. Here's the normal app switcher. So if you do Command Tab, I'm still holding Command. Each time I push Tab, it switches over to another app. So I'm going to do Command Tab. Now I'm on Final Cut and still holding Command, I'm going to press the Option key, and then I'm going to let go of Command. And notice it brings back my minimized window. Whereas if I minimize Final Cut, I go to Finder, I go back to Final Cut, it's not doing anything, right? Because it's not being told to bring back that, that minimized window. So to make the minimized window show up, again, Command-Tab, make sure you're on the app, in this case Final Cut, hold Option, and then let go of Command. And there's our window comes back without having to click on the dock item at the bottom. So that was another question that came through on uh, Instagram. And hopefully that answers the question you, you have. I don't see anything else in the chat here. So we're going to wrap this up. Let me show, switch back over to my keynote here. So again, if you followed the beginning of it, we looked at the top 16 Final Cut keyboard shortcuts, Final Cut Pro keyboard shortcuts. And those are how they've been voted 
through the shortcut of the year bracket, which you can get at anawesomeguide.com. Of course, resource-wise, there's other stuff, other tips, tricks, tutorials, all kinds of stuff on the website. I recommend that you go out and share at Final Cut Pro Help. Share any of my resources to people that you think could find them useful. That's how we can keep this channel online and continuing to growing. Uh, again, anyway, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of those places I'm at. And again, you can always just send me an email, finalcutprohelp at me.com, and we'll be here to help. Uh, otherwise, that's what I got for you on episode 13 of Final Cut Pro Help Live. We will be back online very shortly uh, throughout this week to wrap up the rest of the rounds for Shortcut of the Year and find out which shortcut will be crowned Shortcut of the Year for 2019. Uh, I thank all of you for your votes in getting us to this point. And if, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send an email, reach out to me, and yeah, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.